you know, close group, pretty tight knit group. You could see, you know, guys encouraging guys on the sideline. Just what do you think of how this group was able to come together over the course of the season? Um, I think it was a it was a good season for us as far as um just improving every game. Um, guys coming out ready to play. And like you say, we're a young team, a lot of young players on this team. I think they were just out there having fun, just enjoying the moment, enjoying the experience, um, even with losses. You know, um, came out, won some big games. Um, even during the losses, you know, it wasn't blowouts. It was close games, close losses, and we just lost, like, at the end of the game. So, um, I mean, it was a great experience, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. You mentioned the just kind of like the resilience that we saw throughout the season, all the comebacks, all the fights to the finish. Just mm -hmm. what did you make of just the environment that was created within yeah. these walls to allow those sort of outcomes? Um, just having, just being positive. You know, after every loss, after every game, um, coming in the next day in practice, it was just positivity all around from the coaching staff to the players to the trainers, everybody. And um, you know, we watched film, went over what we did wrong, what we need to improve on, and um, just kept getting better. And um, it was just a fun, positive environment. I know as a veteran, uh, you have a lot to tell these young players and kind of speak wisdom to them and just to your experience in the league. But is there anything that being around these young players have taught you? Um, it just brought back the joy, the fun. You know, you can get caught up in the business side of things. You can get caught up in your own personal stuff. But when you're around these young guys who just now entering the league and, you know, they're just young, having fun and don't really know what's going on, it kind of brings back that fun for you. So for me personally, it brought back that fun, that enjoyment of just playing basketball and not worrying about the business part, not worrying about, you know, personal life stuff, just having fun and enjoying just being around these guys and feeling that that energy, you know, of being around 19, 20, 21 year olds, you know, it was just a fun experience. Derek, what was it like for you sitting out these last couple of months? And um, I know you were dealing with some a back injury, but is that something, you know, you could have played through, or did you and the team sort of come to a mutual decision to just sit out? Um, I think it was something where I talked to the to the training staff and the, and and coach, and you know they thought it was a good idea to kind of just work on my work on my body. You know, just make sure my back is 100%, especially going into the summer, and um, just making sure my back was good. You know, it wasn't anything serious. It was just a little soreness here and there, and um, just wanted to make sure we took care of it. I know these are hard questions to answer now, but do you plan to pick up your player option, and do you expect to be back <laughs> here next year? Yeah, I expect to be back here next year, and um, yeah, I'll probably pick it up. Hey Derek, what'd you uh, what'd you learn about Shea being a teammate of his this year? Oh, just how smooth his game is, how good he is. Um, I knew coming in he was a good player, but um, once I got around him and just watching how he play and watching how he conducts himself and you no, know, just watching him every day, you know, I gained a lot of respect for him. I mean, he's a he's a good player, the way he can come out there and just control the game offensively. Um, and he's not looking to score the ball every single time. He's looking to get his guys, his teammates involved. He's looking to go out there and just have fun. I mean, even when he's on the bench or he's having a bad game, you know, he's cheering on Trey, he's cheering on Baze, he's cheering on Josh, you know. And uh, he just plays the game with the with the fun, you know, that I can't really explain, but it's just he has he has fun out there. And um I think that kind of rubs off on everybody. Mark a little bit about him earlier, and he, he talked a lot about just how he's able to do a lot of different things, almost like a maturity, you know, to yeah. have fun, but also to be a leader. And have you, did you sort of sense a, I don't know, and maybe it does just come yeah. down to a maturity of, of uh, you know, did. self and that sort of thing. Yeah, I did. He plays, um, I mean, just the way he plays, he got such a smooth game. I mean, he doesn't play like a, how old is he, 22, 23, somewhere around there? No, he plays like he's been in the league for a long time. You know, just just the way he plays, and um, I think that rolls off on a lot of guys. What was your overall experience of playing for Mark? Oh, it was a great experience. Um, I mean, he, he's one of those coaches where you can talk to him. You know, he um, he allows you to you know voice your opinion. Um, he'll work with you. Um, I mean, a smart coach, smart guy, um, a player's coach. Um, it, it was it was a great experience playing for him. Derek, there's a lot of high hopes for Josh getting the rookie this year for the Thunder. What are your thoughts on him moving forward, how he can help out this franchise? Um, yeah, Josh is good. He's good, man. 
Um, he's better than I thought he was when I first got here, and he surprised me a lot. Um, I mean, just a guy, you know, with the, with the balls in his hands, he can just do a lot with it. Um, obviously, he, he's a great passer, but, you know, he can score, he can shoot, he can actually actually defend, um, rebound. He can do a lot of stuff out there on the court. And um, I think he has, a, he has a very bright future. How tough is this on you? Uh, veteran like you, you know, fight on a lot of big-time teams, all that success in Utah, and then come to a rebuilding situation. How do you sort of reacclimate to – to getting your arms around that kind of situation? Um, just adapting to it. You know, it was it was tough at first, um, coming from a playoff team, then, you know, coming to a team that's, you know, trying to um, rebuild. But um, I came in with the, with the open mind. Um, I accepted the challenge, and um, I'm glad I'm here. You know, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, like I said before, it brought back that enjoyment, that fun of playing basketball. And um, no, I just enjoy watching these young guys. You know, I, I enjoy watching them come out and improve every game. I enjoy talking to, to Mark. And I enjoy being in this atmosphere. We saw, oh, sorry. we saw a lot of guys take a lot of developmental strides this season from an individual standpoint. From your perspective, you're seeing the, the growth from you know, young guys where they started this season to where they are now. How much optimism does that give you kind of heading into the summer and then to next season? Um, I'm excited about next season because I want to see, um, you know, how these guys come back from this year in the summer and how much they can improve um, going into next year. So I'm, I'm excited about it. And um, like I said, I was seeing it throughout the year. These guys just kept getting better, kept getting better every game. And um, I'm excited about the future of this team. What about Jeremiah in particular? And just what you saw from him in terms of growth and uh, improvement over the course of the season? Um, I think he's a, he's a real mature player. Um, I know at the beginning of the year, he was struggling a little bit. I can remember a game when um, I don't think he made a shot the whole game. And um, I don't think it really got to him mentally. You know, he just kept shooting, kept working through it. And I think the next game, he had a really good game. And I told him, and I was like, that happens in the NBA. You know, you have a game where you miss every shot, you look like you just trash. And then the next game, you go out there and you look like you're an all-star. You know, that's just, that just how this NBA stuff works. Um, he, he's a good player. He can do a lot of things on the court. He can shoot, dribble, uh, can play the f small ball five, can come in and play the four, can play the three a little bit. Um, no, he, he's a talented player. Just to follow up on the rebuild, is that something that um, like Mark talked about being transparent with players, staff, everyone? Is that something that you know you're aware of the plan? You know what's going on, and like you, you know. Being a vet, like the front office gives you transparency on what the plan is. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody knew what the plan was. Um, like I said, I just came in um, with an open mind, and um, they, they we we talked a lot. Me, Mark, Sam, we talked a lot, especially before the season started. And um, I wanted to be a part of it, you know, in a way that I that I can help. I told them I would, whether that's you know being a leader on the team or. Um, Helping guys out, whatever y'all need from me, I, I, I would do it. I would accept that challenge. And um, I think it worked out for me. It worked out for the team. And, you know, everybody happy. When uh, Chris Paul and Al Horford were here, they said that playing with all the young guys gave them uh, a lot more energy. Is that something that? It definitely did, yeah. <laughs> it definitely did. The way these guys play, man, you got to be able to get up and down the court. Got to be able to have that energy all game. You know, it's not like I'm playing with a bunch of old guys out here, you know, these young guys, they just full of energy, you know, and um, I think that's what helped me out because, like I said before, it brought back that fun, that enjoyment, and um, just a lot of energy, a lot of fun. Derek, the way things went there at the end of the year, there were a lot of you guys on the bench in street clothes at the end. I'm sure that some of those moments were more lighthearted and, you know, kind of fun. But what, what were those conversations like? Is you're over there, Lou, Shay, mm -hmm. Josh. I mean, what, what were you guys sort of – can you kind of take us inside what those moments were? For you? Um, I think we – well, for the f most part, we were supporting the guys that was out there because um, those guys, they, they played really good, the guys that was out there. And um, I think just sitting over there on the bench, we um, – well, for me personally, I can't speak for them. I don't know what they was doing, but for me personally, I was on. Um, I was just enjoying the moment, you know, cheering on the teammates. Um, had a couple of guys sit next to me. We were just talking, talking about the game, and I uh, really just just enjoying the moment, just living in the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what they was doing on the bench. That was sitting like further down from me, so I don't know what they was doing. Do you guys? Do you try to share with maybe some of those guys? Cause I assume most of them would have been younger guys, unless it was Mike sitting by you. But more younger guys, did you find yourself 
talking about situations or things that happened from a veteran perspective with some of those guys? Yeah, I was. Um, I mean, we were talking about a lot of things. You know, when you sit on the bench, I mean, conversations can go from basketball to personal life to clothes to jewelry to all kind of stuff. So it depends on, you know, what we're talking about at the moment. But uh, I try to share some basketball knowledge whenever I can, whenever I see something on the court or if they ask me a question or if I have something to say to them. You know, whoever's sitting next to me, I'm just go ahead and say it to them, you know. And um, like I said, when you sit on that bench, it just be – it could be any conversation going on. Typically, young teams are, aren't that good on defense, but when you guys were at full strength, you guys were really good. Um, what, what do you think was the reason for that? Being good on defense? Yeah. Um, talking, communication, um, just getting better throughout the year, playing hard, playing together. And it also helps when you have players like Lou. We got players like Bays who can guard multiple positions, um, guys who are willing to, to – to, to play defense, um, guys like Wiggs come out there and really play hard defensively and uh, can guard multiple positions. So it kind of helps when you have uh, players like that. And um, just really just playing together. Anybody else in the room? All right, we got one on the Zoom fed from Christos Saltas. Go ahead, Christos, with your question. Uh, as one of the veterans of this group, what makes you confident about the future and the growth that the uh, this team can show next season? Um, what makes me comfortable? Because um, I've been in this situation before. Um, a couple of years ago, I was in a rebuild situation with um, with the Utah, and we kind of went through the same process. And obviously, we, we got better every year until we um, became a playoff team. And now I can see the same thing happening here. Um, a lot of young guys that's eager to get better, that's, that want to get better, and very talented. And they're um, just hard working, hard playing type players. And um, I can just see the improvement, like I said, after every game. And I'm pretty sure coming into next year and, and the years after that, you know, it's going to be a real special team because it's a real special group here. And um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, in the next however many years, it's going to be a really good team. Thanks, man.